If you want to use your website to help you book more appointments, consultations, or even paid coaching calls, you are in the right place because in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the free online meeting scheduler Calendly step by step. So I'm going to show you how to get your account, how to set up your event that you want people to be able to schedule, how to sync that to your online calendar so you never get double booked or you never take a meeting when you don't want one, then how to brand the scheduler with your colors and the really easy way to embed this right on your website if you want to do that. And in the end, I'll even show you how you can set it up to actually charge for these paid consultations or coaching calls. I personally use that feature on my own website and I can tell you it's pretty seamless. I honestly love Calendly and it's been a real game changer inside of my business. So let's just jump right in and get you set up to take all those new bookings. Okay, so here we are on the Calendly homepage and the first thing I wanna show you is just kind of the pricing so you can see for yourself if the free plan is going to be good enough. For most of you, it will be. So basically, long story short, here's what you get with the free plan. Um, you get one calendar connection per person, so that means it'll sync with one of your online calendars, whether that's a Google Calendar or Outlook, anything like that. And we've got these options you have in terms of calendars. You can have one active event type. So if you have one kind of core offering, like one consultation or coaching call type, if all you have is one, then you're good to go on the free plan. Most of the stuff that's not included is stuff I don't really use anyway. One of the biggest things that you would want the paid plan for would be actually to be able to collect money for a meeting. And I'll show you how to do that later. And the other thing maybe you want the paid plan for would be to customize your colors when you add Calendly to your website. It's not the biggest deal in the world. They do provide you with a few basic colors, but if you really wanted tight control over that, looks like you gotta go with the professional plan at 12 bucks a month. And then if you have a team, you know, if you've got multiple people on the same calendar, you need to upgrade to the $16 plan. But again, we're gonna get started for free. So I'm just gonna click on sign up. It's gonna pop in a Gmail address and get started. And it's prompting me to sign up with Google because it was Gmail. This makes it really easy to coordinate with your calendar. So I'm just gonna keep going through the options here. And now here's where it's asking if um, they can access your Google account. So you definitely wanna do this. The reason is you want it to have access to your calendar. So I'm gonna click on allow. And here's where you can set up your custom link. So you've got a few options. You can either embed your Calendly scheduling tool right on your website, which I'll show you how to do later. Or if you don't wanna do that, you can just link people to a page on Calendly's website that's very simple, lets them book, and this is where you would set that up. So you, know, you can change that here as long as it's available. You definitely wanna make sure your time zone is set up here. I'm on central, so that's good to go. I'll click on continue. Okay, so here's where we get to the calendar connection. So it's gonna do two things for you. Basically, first of all, it's always going to check your online calendar for conflicts, meaning nobody can schedule an appointment on this if you already have something on the books previously. In other words, you're never gonna be double booked using this. And the other thing is when someone does make an appointment on your Calendly, it's going to put that appointment onto your calendar. And that way you always have access to it. You can always see what's coming up next. So I'm gonna click on continue. And now it's gonna ask you when you're actually available to take meetings. So this is a really basic setup. And it does say here, you're gonna be able to further customize your availability later, meaning if you wanted to uh, make a morning block and then an afternoon block. You can do that later. Right now though, it just lets you set like one big block for the day. Default is nine to five, Monday through Friday, but let's say you're like me and you don't actually wanna take meetings on Mondays or Fridays, you could click those off. You could make this, you know, from 9 a.m. to, I don't know, 1 p.m. if you wanted to kind of tighten all your meetings up, whatever works best for you. And then I'm gonna click on continue. And I don't know how important this is, but just kind of come up with something that's gonna be the best fit for what you actually offer, then click on finish. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of this guy over here. So basically, with the free plan, again, you're allowed one meeting type. This is the default one. It's just called 30 minute meeting. I'm not sure if we're gonna have to just customize this or if it's gonna let us add a new one, but I'll just click on add new. Yeah, it looks like it's gonna let us do it. Then the other one will probably just get shut off. So with that free plan, we've only got two options. The first is a one-on-one -on -one meeting where uh, the person who's scheduling it can pick a time to meet with you. And group lets multiple people schedule you at the same time. I've never actually used this. I don't really, I can't think of a good use case for it. Maybe if you're doing like rolling office hours or something and you're, you don't mind multiple people coming in. But I'm just gonna assume this is like a coaching call or a consultation, in which case one-on-one -on -one is what you want. So 
click on create, and here's where you would give it its name. So um, I'm just gonna call it free consultation. Now location, so in most cases these days this is probably gonna be over the phone or over a Zoom call, so you've got all these options here. Um, you can choose phone call, Google Meet, Zoom. Some of these require an integration, so like if you were to choose Zoom, you'd have to click on the Zoom integration page and then you'd have to basically connect it. I'm not gonna go through all those steps here, but you just click on connect Zoom. You have to have a Zoom account already. It'll walk you through those steps and it's pretty easy. I'm just gonna go back here. So I'm gonna X out and I'm just gonna choose a phone call. And here's where you would choose, I'll call my invitee or my invitee should call me. I'd always recommend keeping the ball in your court, not letting them decide when they're gonna call you. So I would always leave it just like this and click on update. And if you wanted to give people options, you could add another one here, like maybe you wanted a Google Meet here, which by the way, does not require an integration, so that's nice. And then right here under description, you just write what the meeting's gonna be about. Just something really super simple like this. You might wanna let them know if there's anything to prepare or anything they need to know ahead of time to make the meeting more productive. Then if you wanna change the link structure here, so right now this would be calendly.com slash, this is what I came up with, webcoachwes slash free consultation. You can change that here if you want to. And here's where you can give this event a basic color. They've got, I think, like 10 to choose from here. I just choose a simple blue one and then click on next. Okay, so now you're gonna decide when people can book this event. So right now, anyone can book 60 calendar days out into the future. I tend to like to keep this a lot tighter because I found if people schedule something 60 days in advance, they're really likely to not show up for that meeting. So I generally would like to keep this more like around seven days. You might choose to go, you know, something more like 14 days, or you could do a date range if it's a limited time thing or indefinitely into the future, but I don't recommend doing that. Then duration, you can set anything here from 15 minutes all the way, you know, you can do custom. I think for a free consultation, 30 minutes is probably good. And then you've already set the hours that you wanna work, remember when we did that step? So we've got Tuesday through Thursday, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. here, and that's just called working hours. And if that's what you wanna use here, great. If not, you can click on set custom hours. And this is where you'd be able to kind of set lunch breaks and that kind of thing. So let's say you wanted to do on Tuesday, 9 a.m. to, um, let's just say to 11.30 a.m. And then you could click on the new interval and then you could come back after lunch and you could go from 12.30 to call it 3.30, I don't know. And then you could even save this new schedule. So you would just call it uh, working hours plus breaks and then click on save. So right now people can schedule themselves at any of these times except for if there was a, an event on your calendar already that conflicted. So let's say this Tuesday, you already have a meeting from 10 to 10.30, that option would no longer be available for anyone else to book it. So that's really why I love Calendly so much. Um, okay, so next we can choose if we wanna add buffer times before or after an event. Now I love to do this because I used to have appointments set where they'd be back to back. And I don't know if you've ever had a meeting go long, I know I have, where you're trying to get someone off the phone and you feel like you're giving really bad customer service at that point, like hustling someone off the phone to make time for your next event. Because I don't like to be late for these. I always like to come right on time. So I give myself a bit of a buffer just for that very reason. So you, know, you can choose before or after. I'm just gonna choose after, and I'm gonna give myself a 15 minute buffer there. And then for additional rules, if you wanna set these, um, available start times in increments of 30 minutes, meaning people can only book at you know, 1, 1 2, as opposed to, you know, if you click here, there's 10 minute or 15 minutes. Like I don't want people booking me at uh, you know, 2, 10 p.m. So 30 minutes is the increments I want. And then this is one's interesting. Invitees can't schedule within whatever time span you set. So I don't ever want anyone booking me same day. So I actually will put 24 hours here, but that's completely up to you. And then if you know you're gonna burn out if you have too many of these, maybe it will say five per day. You don't have to do that. I just know for myself, I probably wouldn't wanna take five of these a day or any more anyway. And then time zone display, keep this checked. That way time zones are gonna show for each individual person in their own time zone. And if you wanted to make it a secret event to where only if they have the link can they schedule it, you can check that. But I'm gonna click on next. Okay, so now we've taken care of the part where people can actually schedule it. But now what about the information that you wanna extract from this form. So we're gonna start with invitee questions. You know, obviously we have the basics like name and email, you definitely wanna keep those. And anything with a little asterisk, of course means that it's required. You want those things to be required. Then you've got more options. So what I recommend doing is only asking the bare minimum 
that's gonna help you prepare for this call. I know it's gonna be tempting to try to get as much information as possible, but remember, the more you ask for, the fewer people are actually going to schedule this with you. So you gotta be really strategic about it. So ask things that will, again, help you prepare, and B, things that might help you weed people out who may not even be a good fit for you. So one thing I can think of would be, let's add a new question here, and you might say something like, you know, what's your estimated budget? Maybe you found that a lot of people are getting on the phone with you who can't afford your services. So you could either have this just be a free form thing with one line where they just type in an answer, or you could do what I would like to do here, which is radio buttons. So that's just gonna let people click one of the options. So. You know, so we've got these three options, and then maybe if someone fills it out with under 500 and you get that um, notification in your email, you might choose to email them back and say, hey, sorry, I don't think you're ready for us at this time, but feel free to get back to us when you have a higher budget, something like that. And then we'll make this required and then click on apply. And then if you wanna change the order, I might bring it up here. And then you can change this verbiage if you want. If you wanna make it more specific, you would just do that right here. Click on apply and then save and close. Now some additional options you might wanna look at. So let's go to notifications and cancellation policy. And we're gonna scroll down here to email reminders. And I'm actually gonna switch this to on. That way they're gonna get a reminder um, at a set time before your appointment, which is gonna help decrease those no-shows. So I'm gonna click on personalize. And you can personalize this more if you want. You can kind of make it a little bit more conversational, a little bit more branded for you and your business. I would definitely recommend doing something like that. And then you can choose the timing. So we could do 24 hours before. You could even add another one that's one hour before. And if you wanted to keep your email address kind of more secret, you could turn this on to where they're not gonna see your email address. It's not gonna come from your email address. And if you wanted to send text reminders, you could turn this on. Um, it will make them kind of sign up for it in the sign up process. They will have to consent to that, but you could also personalize that as well. And I, again, I would recommend making it a little bit more personal than what they give you here. And again, you can set the timing here, maybe one hour. And then if you want a cancellation policy, you might just type that in here. Something like, we require rescheduling and cancellations to be made at least 24 hours in advance. And you generally want cancel and reschedule links in your notifications so that if something comes up, you would rather they actually click through and cancel or reschedule as opposed to just not showing up. So I'm gonna click on save and continue. And I will show you how to collect payments a little later, but we do need a paid account to do that. So for now, let's check out what this looks like on the live page. I'll click right here. But now what if you actually needed to embed this on your website? So I'll show you a really easy way to do it. Just click on share and then add to website. And you've got a few options here. You can actually add the entire tool right on your website front and center. You can add a text link that opens a pop-up. But what I think is the easiest to show you here is widget pop-up. So I'm gonna click right here. So basically it's gonna have a little uh, floating button on your website that people can click any time and it's gonna open a pop-up where they can then schedule. But choose your own adventure here, whatever you want. But I'm gonna click on this one and then continue. So don't let this scare you right now. It's, it's actually easier than it looks. The first thing you wanna do is change the button text to whatever you want it to be. So rather than schedule time with me, I like to be more specific, something like book your free consultation. Then here's where you can change the button background color. I think even on a free plan, it lets you do it. So you can choose whatever color fits your branding, but I have to caution you, you want this button to stand out. So don't make it some color that you're using throughout your website. You wanna pick a color that goes with your branding, but that you're only using on this button. So in our case here, I'll just choose this kind of blue color, and then you can change the text colors. So if you wanted the words to be black on blue, you could do that. I'm gonna leave it on white. Now, booking page settings. So this is interesting. It's actually letting us change the colors. I thought that you needed to have the paid plan to do that. Maybe this is just kind of a free trial thing, but it does seem like you can actually brand this with your own colors. So I would always keep the background color white. That's just gonna be the background of the whole calendar. Text color, keep that black, but then the button and links. This is where you can use kind of a pop of color. And I'm gonna make it the same as I have here. So I'm gonna just grab this code, just copy it, and I'm gonna paste it like so. Okay, with that done, what I'm gonna do now is all I need to do is click on copy code. And I'm gonna show you now how to do it on WordPress, but if you're using Wix or Squarespace or anything else like that, follow their documentation. But I will show you a really easy way to do this on WordPress. Okay, so if you're logged into your WordPress dashboard, you're just gonna go over to plugins, add new. And I'm just gonna go under search and I'm gonna type in header footer code manager. 
and this one right here, just click on Install Now and on Activate. Once that's activated, you're gonna see on the left side panel HFCM for Header Footer Code Manager. It's a mouthful. You're just gonna click on that and then add new snippet. And I'm just gonna call this, I'm just gonna type in Calendly Schedule Button, something like that, HTML site-wide so it displays on every page of the site. And then if you wanna exclude any pages, you can do that. Like maybe there's a certain page where you don't want that to show up, but probably not. And just leave the location as header. And then here's where you're just going to paste. Remember we copied this, I'll just do it one more time. Copy the code, and then you're just going to paste it. Let's just look at the site now and just see if it is showing up right down here. Book your free consultation. And unfortunately we have the branding right here because um, we're on the free plan, but if you click on it, it opens up and people can book their time and it asks for all the information and you're good to go. But what if you wanted people to be able to book a paid coaching call or a paid consultation on your website? So again, you do need that pro plan to do it. And I am logged into my other account that happens to be set up with a pro plan. So in that case, you would just add a new event. I'm going to call this, you know, paid coaching call and you would go through all the same steps that we did before and then next. And we do all these options like we did before as well. Next. And of course you'd ask the right questions and do all that stuff, but we've already done that. Now we're gonna go down to collect payments. This is where we have to do it. So what you do have to do first is let's go up to integrations and you have two choices here. You can either do it using Stripe, which is slightly more advanced, or PayPal, which is a little easier. You just click through to PayPal. Now my PayPal is currently set up, but if not, it would walk you through the steps to connect your PayPal account to your Calendly account. Then we can go back out and we can actually go to collect payments, accept payments with PayPal, and then, you know, whatever it would be, if it's $149, and you can choose your currency here if you're in a different country, and then lay out your payment terms right here, like no refunds or all sales are final, or we require rescheduling within 24 hours, anything like that. And then you would just click on save and close, and it's just like any other event, you can embed it right in your website, or you can send people the direct link to it right on Calendly. And now that you've got Calendly all set up, what about the other parts of your website that are gonna help you sell yourself better so you can book even more clients into your calendar? Well, I've got a really simple but really comprehensive video tutorial that's gonna show you how to create the perfect booking website completely from scratch with zero technical experience needed at all. So click right here and I'll show you how it's done.